afternoon. My name is Ruth May Sayers. I am pleased to host Cultivating STEM Education with NASA Educational Resources. In this series, we will hear the voice of various STEM professionals discuss how they use NASA resources within their everyday lives. The purpose of the series is as follows, to discuss benefits of interdisciplinary units devoted to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, to discuss how NASA resources can be used to advance STEM education, as well as to make recommendations on strategies that can be used to successfully implement interdisciplinary units devoted to STEM education. For the first series, we will hear the voice of Dr. Manuk Manugian and Mile Krajewski discuss how they use NASA resources within the fields of mathematics. My students call me Dr. M. And STEM education for me began in 1960, having received my bachelor's degree from the University of Texas in Austin. I was offered an instructorship at a very small liberal arts college asked to teach mathematics and physics. Being at a time when the Soviet Union and the U.S. had locked horns to control space, it seemed to me that relating mathematics and physics in experiments that go beyond the, high, uh, beyond the classroom presentations was important. And as such, I did, uh, started a science club in which we studied rocket flight, ro rocket construction, and showed students the relationship between uh, the various STEM fields. Following that period of time where my students and I succeeded in reaching the thermosphere by launching rockets that were one stage, two stage, and three stages, a feat that was not duplicated anywhere in the world at the time encouraged my students to pursue car uh, careers in STEM fields. It wasn't until about three years ago when some filmmakers had come across some of our successes and decided to produce a documentary on what my students and I were able to do. As a result of that, university students here at the University of South Florida, were inspired enough to start their own science club called SOAR. And today, we have a very successful science club using the various STEM fields to learn about the interconnectedness of STEM. With that came our summer program for high school students in which STEM is emphasized. As a result of that, the research that's being produced by these high school students is what we as educators need to do to encourage high schools to take over what needs to be done in STEM education. wanted me to describe my perspective about the benefits of interdisciplinary units devoted to science, technology, engineering, and math. Recently, I got an opportunity to teach partial differential equations, and my background in mathematics is so-called geometric group theory. This is the first time, actually, I realized that the area of partial differential equations is so rich with uh, concrete problems. For the moment, I wondered, I mean, just uh, uh, how many my students will benefit, uh, let's say my students in vector calculus or my students in calculus 3, if they have access of, uh, of, of these problems. If one can actually present these problems in a simple way so that uh, undergraduate with basic uh, background in calculus or maybe linear algebra is capable of understanding them. 
And uh, at the same time, these abstract mathematical ideas and concepts suddenly become very concrete, which uh, in, in many ways enhance uh, not just student understanding, but actually fosters this uh, desire to learn this material. So it's not just for exam, but it is something which is really concrete, and uh, they can see the benefits of, of the study of these uh, abstract objects. With uh, the course I gave previous semester in spring, it was a Calculus 3, and uh, my approach to this course was very visual. And I can uh, assure you that majority of students actually were pleased with this approach. Suddenly, mathematical language, which is uh, very abstract, analytical expressions of a certain concepts or computations, with the help of uh, uh, sketches and visual material, become much more real. Of course, I mean, if we had the opportunity to illustrate that with videos and more technology, the way educators would uh, frame this, uh, this explanation, it would be much uh, richer. But uh, uh, even without big investment in technology, when one promotes abstract mathematical ideas with the help of uh, visual material, students have a feeling that uh, they really understand. They really understand the material. Suddenly, the notion of a vector field and gradient, partial derivative, flux, uh, divergence uh, become very natural objects, and uh, the computations with these objects are also, in some sense, justifiable. It is not abstraction for the abstraction, but rather abstraction which uh, comes from needs of uh, real problems. I had an opportunity to look at the uh, NASA website and of course there are many ways how things can be improved. Let me comment just on one of these uh, ways. What was uh, fascinating for me was video which was uh, one can find on YouTube also about uh, 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 numerical uh, simulation of a Nix rotation. This is a moon of, uh, of Pluto. Uh, so, uh, if one sees uh, this numerical uh, simulation of Nix, uh, immediately you can realize that even though uh, the, the image of this rotem of the object uh, is fascinating and apparently um, this uh, movement of, uh, of Pluto's moon is uh, chaotic, okay? Uh, there is no sound or there is no accompanying uh, explanation about how this uh, uh, simulation was obtained. I'm sure, and one can, uh, one can see many short videos, like 15 or 20 minutes of videos, uh, which, which uh, uh, illustrate this type of uh, simulation with pieces of mathematics, uh, of physics, which are relevant to, to this. Of course, uh, whole computation may rely on very complex uh, algorithms and procedures, but there is always possibility to simplify to that extent that it will be understandable to, let's say, undergraduate math student or undergraduate physics or computer science uh, student. These capsules of, uh, I would say, which illustrate STEM possibilities for, for, for understanding science or technology or engineering and mathematics, uh, I think would be uh, quite uh, valuable for students, uh, not just as a source of entertainment, one can say, but actually to learn something. For example, imagine, wouldn't it be uh, nice if I can illustrate some of the material which will be given in my vector calculus course with a video like this, uh, in which uh, we will see the relevance of uh, notions uh, in the vector calculus. Actually, the books we use in the vector calculus course, uh, written by Marsden and Tromba, is, as I know, I mean, uh, Jerry Marsden was uh, really instrumental in, and, in some sense, a great pioneer in developing the science behind uh, the computations uh, behind this 
interplanetary trajectories of satellites and uh, objects. So, okay. so, uh, what kind of instructional strategies can be used to promote STEM education? I would focus on this uh, possibility of including combining video material like the simulation of uh, Nick's rotation with the relevant mathematics or physics or chemistry which just a launching of a satellite, such a scientifically rich event, and it could be commented uh, from many perspectives. If the students uh, have a taste of uh, one of the aspects of this event, let's say mathematical aspect of, of that event, uh, which would uh, come as, uh, you know, writing maybe a differential equations, which will explain the force uh, or the, the altitude or the the trajectory of the of the object or let's say if one wants to write a little piece about uh, problems uh, with uh, mechanical mechanical problems or maybe from physics okay i think that would be quite a general uh, public not just general public but actually undergraduate students in uh, stem uh, sciences Manuk and Mele highlighted that we can use NASA resources to explore advanced mathematical phenomena in practical yet engaging ways. For example, Manuk highlighted how he used NASA resources to build rockets within the collegiate environment, and as well as the high school environment. And Mele highlighted how he used the next moons to explore advanced mathematical concepts. These are just two of many possible examples as to how we can use NASA resources to advance the field of mathematics as well as STEM education as a whole. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day.